if the Lord has been good to you. Bless his name. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the praise. Uh, if you can't do nothing but put your mind on the one thing that he has done for you, he's certainly worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the praise. He's a great God. And there's none greater than our Lord. Thank you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Listen, to be expeditious, I call your attention to the book of Luke, 22nd chapter, starting at the 31st verse. I do honor the most high God. I thank him for his goodness, his mercy, and his kindness. Amen. Just giving you an opportunity to get there to Luke 22, verse 31. If you don't have your Bibles, it will be up on the board. Amen to our First Lady Church Mother, to the men and women of God, to all of you that's in the house and you that are viewing virtually. Luke, the 22nd chapter, Luke, the physician, listen to what he says. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as sweet. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of the Lord abides forever. This morning, I simply want to talk to you about the Lord has prayed for you. The Lord has prayed for you. Our Father and our God, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, and we lift you up. We thank you for being the great God that you are in our life, O oh Lord. Thank you for saving, healing, delivering, strengthening us. God, the list is endless. Don't have time to name it all. But that God that we readily recognize, we thank you for it. And we bless your name, O oh Lord. Uh, God, I ask in this hour, Lord, uh, that you would give me what and how to say to these, your people, a word of encouragement, a word of strength, a word, O oh God, of peace and joy. God, do it even right now, Lord. I step behind the cross that no flesh would glory, but to God be the glory. I ask, however, that you bless now the words of my lips, meditation in my heart, that it would be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And the people of God said amen, amen, and amen. Just give the Lord a hand praise as you are seated in his presence. What a great God we serve. What a great God we serve uh, the Lord has prayed for you I, I think it's very important that we consider the setting of the story because a lot of times we beat Peter up but we have to understand one thing that Peter had not uh, been gifted with the gift of the Holy Ghost yet no that loomed before the Lord Jesus and Peter was uh, Peter was just being Peter the way we be uh, ourselves. You know how we are. Amen. See, one thing about it, without the Holy Ghost, it's difficult to live a God-centered life. We can know God, know the things about God, but that doesn't move us to live a God-centered life. And we need the Spirit of the Lord dwelling within us. Amen. It, it's something that uh, we, we very readily hear it being taught, spoken, preached about in the church about receiving the Holy. We talk about the gifts, but amen. The question is, do you have it? Where's the evidence? Where, where's the evidence? And if anyone ought to know about God and the spirit of God and the movement of God, it ought to be in the church. 
it ought to be in the church. We ought to come here, amen, uh, for a renewal. Go out, oh God, so somebody else can see that God is yet alive. We look at it because here's the Lord. It's not yet time for him to rule. And the disciples are awaiting their ministry. But you know what? In order for you to be suitable for your ministry, you got to know what's in your heart. You got to know exactly what you are made of. Amen. And it's not the good times that make you. It's the difficult times, amen. When you knocked off your feet and you're flat on your face, amen. See, that tells you and lets you know what you're made of. Will you stay there and wallow in whatever, or do you have the tenacity to get up, amen, and say, you know what, my God is greater than this. Thank you, O oh God. The Bible also say, he that thinketh he stand, take heed, lest he falls. I, I, I look at Peter because sometimes we fail to understand our importance in the grand of what God is about. Sometimes we ourselves, can I just have another mic because this one just seems to be playing with me today. Amen. Thank you, oh God. Peter, he held a very important place amongst the disciples. Sometimes the Lord knows if, uh, or the devil knows if I can get that one, I can get a whole lot of them. I can get a whole lot of the disciples. But listen to what the Lord, the Lord knew. So the Lord, although he was talking to all the disciples, uh, he himself said, let me address you, Peter. And notice what he says. Uh, 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 the enemy is constantly pointing his arrows at the disciples, every one of us. Quit thinking that you're going to go through the life, through this life, unscathed, untempted, amen, uh, thwarted by the enemy. No, he's on his job. You don't have to ask him to come to your house. He's coming uninvited. He's coming with the intentions to steal, kill, and to destroy, amen, because you decide to give your life to the Lord when the Lord drew you. So here he is. Listen to what he says. The enemy just doesn't want to bother us. Notice the verbiage. He said, Simon, Simon. The enemy, the devil desires to have you. Now see, even before we go any further, I think we need to look at that so we can get an understanding. He didn't call him Peter. He called him Simon, uh, your fleshly nature. Uh-oh. And notice, there's got to be some importance there because he called him twice. You know, anytime your mama or daddy called you twice, you knew something was important. Amen. Especially when they call you by your God, uh, uh, what? Notice what he says, Simon, Simon, uh, the enemy desires to have you and to sift you as we. In other words, that nature part of you, that fleshly part of you, he makes his appeal. Notice, <laughs> The enemy is on his job because he wants to do anything to keep us out of church. And then when we get here, he wants us to see where something's wrong. That one's singing too loud. That one's offbeat. That one, you, you, you know, uh, uh, his pants too tight. We always talk about the ladies. Let me talk about the men. 
it's, it's just something so that when we get into the house of God, amen, our mind isn't fixed on receiving what God would have us, amen, praise the Lord. See, sometimes you got to come to the house of God with blinders on. I come for no other reason but to chase after God. Thank you, oh God, because listen, we're two or three. You got to understand, it ain't going to happen by you staying home. You staying home, you know what? I'm just so fed up with those people at church. I'm just going to stay home, and the Lord is going to bless me. Hello, he does not make house calls when you can come to church. I hope you hear me. He does not make house calls when you get up and when you go to the store and buy your food, when you can go and pay your, uh, uh, no, 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 and you want him to come to your house. He said, no, forsake not the assembling of yourselves again. Oh, I'm getting in trouble today. Uh, because he's constantly pulling at that fleshly part of us. He's constantly pulling on the Simon part of us. He said, I'm not going to call you Peter because Peter is the rock, and right now you're not the rock. And the enemy knows what to come at us with. Every one of us, he knows what to come at us with. Amen. Amen. It might not be in the home. It might be on the job. If it's not on the job, amen, it's out of the community. If it's not out in the community, it's with your, uh, 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 your money. If it's not your money, it's your vehicle. If it's not your vehicle, it's your clothes. If it's not your clothes, it's your hair. If it's not this, it's that, amen. Hallelujah. You're going to have to get to the point where you're going to have to say, it doesn't matter, I'm going to church. I learned one thing. If I'm going to be sick, I'm going to be sick at church. I'm believing I'm going to come to church as God is going to stir somebody come lay hands on me. What's the difference between being sick at church and being sick at home? Uh, I'm getting in trouble really today. He said, ye yeah, are sick, do what? Call for what? Hello, you in the right? Hey, brother minister, come here. Uh, I, I need you to lay hands on me. Because you know at home you ain't picking up no phone. Well, he already told us what to do. Well, let me. You have to understand this because, listen, he said, he desires to have you that he may sift you as we. Sifting. No the time they would call it winnowing. What it does is you're being shaken violently. Hmm. Uh, but the shaking violently separates the wheat from the tares. All right? What it is actually doing is it's separating the non-usable from the food. And what they would do it, doing harvest, the uh, farmers would go in and they would have that wine press or whatever, amen, and, and, and they would go through the process, and here it is, uh, they would throw the weed up in the air, the tares would blow away, and the wheat end up on the floor. But it's the beating process. He wants to have you so he can beat you that you don't be food and ain't nothing left but tears. That's why the enemy, see God does it so that that which isn't good for us, amen, he eradicates it out of us and only food is left. And we're fit for the master's use. <laughs> Thank you, oh God. Uh, ain't no need of us thinking that we're going to be fit for the master's use if we don't go through the process. Hello, you're going to have to tell yourself, hey, amen, the good is being separated from the bad, and when it's all over, I'll yet be standing. You can't get out of it. But notice, 
He wants to have you. And notice who he wanted to have. Peter, lead disciple. Notice what he said. To him who is given much, much is what? Much is required. Thank you, O oh God. And, and, and right now things uh, are, are being agitated, many things are being shaken, amen, in your lives. Uh, uh, but here it is. The question is, do you have enough God in your life where you would be able to endure? Here's the good news. See, God is not a knee-jerk God. Knee-jerk means that something happens. Anybody ever gone to the doctor? A amen. And you sit down. And, and your foot don't go out there until it's, until it's been hit. That's not God. Listen to what God is saying. He didn't say, I'm praying for you. He says, even before it gets there, I prayed for you. Thank you, oh God. See, that's nothing that you're ever going to go through that God hasn't already prayed for you, prepared you for, amen, and you can come out victorious, amen, if you don't allow it to, to be the assignment in you and remain the Peter. It's easy to quit. Anybody been there? It's easy to quit. I had enough. I'm not going to do this anymore. Amen. I, I, hello. I mean, some of us have even quit good jobs. I had enough. <laughs> the enemy is good at placing trials and temptations. Notice what he says. No temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to Simon. Did you get that? See, you didn't get what I just said. To that which is common to man. And the enemy wants us to always show up as a man and not a Christian. How you going to handle it? Are you going to handle it in a fleshly way instead of a spiritual way? Amen. The option is always there. But no temptation has overtaken you except that which is what? Common to man. And notice what he said. They that walk in the spirit, amen. Uh, hallelujah. You will not, amen. Those things of the flesh won't even face you. Thank you, O oh God. Help us, O oh God. Notice what in First Peter. See, one thing about Peter, and although Peter, his uh, strength failed, uh, his tenacity failed, but his faith didn't fail. Some things have knocked, have, have knocked you down and knocked you out, but you still got the faith to get up. All right, you still have the faith to get up. Please don't think that you're not going to weather some things, amen, that will almost knock you out of the race. Hallelujah, but you're going to have to get up. Hallelujah. I might wallow in, 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 in the um, pig's mire, but I'm getting up and I'm getting out and I'm going back to my father. My faith has not failed me. Listen to what he says in 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Amen. He's roaring. And there's so much out there that he's roaring with even right now. He's your adversary. Sometimes he doesn't, he, 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 he disguises himself. You got to know what he looks like. Amen. Because everybody that's talking good to you is not talking for you. 
as a roaring lion, lion seeking whom he may what? Devour. He's not out, amen, to play tiddly winks with you. He wants to devour us, amen. But know this, amen, that your stance for God, uh, hallelujah, other people are depending on you to make it. Someone else's salvation is all predicated on your obedience to God. And you know what? We don't want to hear that or acknowledge that, but it is true. Because some people will say, if that one fell, I know I don't have a chance. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Paul said, do what? Follow me as I follow Christ. And anytime you see me not following Christ, don't leave me out there. Grab me. Shake me. What, 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 what are you doing? Amen. But when you see someone that isn't following, don't go after them. Praise God. One thing about God, he knew that Peter was a special target for the enemy. He wanted Peter to know, Peter, I, I, I know what you're going through, but I pray for you. I, I know you're following me, but I know you're a weak disciple. I know you're weak because every time I see you, you got that sword on your side. Ain't nobody else in the room got a sword. You got your sword on. That sword was an indication to the Lord that he had a false trust in his ability. Wow. Sometimes there's things that, that are an indication in your life that you're not truly trusting in the Lord. Thank you, O oh God. Sometimes it's how we react to the word of God. Sometimes when a word hits you, we go out of the church, amen, so mad. When we ought to be glad because it speaks volume of his grace and his mercy. Because we could tell ourselves, the Lord revealed me to me and then tell nobody else, amen. And he's given me space to repent and be saved. That's just how good God is. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord. But don't get me wrong, because when Peter learned of his uh, imperfection, he said, Ah, oh God, I'm ready to go. Yeah, Peter, did you hear what I just told you? He said, Listen, after you are converted, strengthened. So, see, we, we out trying to bring people to the Lord. Uh -oh. It's difficult for us to really bring people to the Lord when we ourselves are not strengthened, established, and strong in him ourselves. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because if you can't climb the tree, don't tell me you can climb it. You tell me I can climb it. You can't climb it. Oh, when I was young, I used to climb. Yeah, but neither one of us young. So let me see you climbing now. Then, <laughs> thank you, oh God. So the Lord knew the weakness of Peter's flesh. But I love the perfection of his grace. I prayed for you. That your faith do what? Fail not. So here it is. If I need faith to go through whatever I'm going to go through, somebody please tell me how to get it. Tell me how to weather my storm. Tell me how to hold on when things are rough. Tell me when the going gets rough and tough what I got to do, amen, to keep my head above the water. Somebody please tell me because you know what? The Bible certainly isn't silent in the how to get faith. Faith coming by what? The hearing of God. Uh, hallelujah. So we need to be where faith, and don't get me wrong, because not everybody's dividing the word of truth. 
There's a lot of people that are preaching, and that's all they want to do is pre preach. But amen, you got to do what? Rightly divide the word of truth, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Don't you know that the Lord has appointed and anointed those to preach and teach? Not someone that's just going to be uh, appeasing and tenderizing our fleshly desires. Amen. You ought to get out of here and I'm gonna be, you're going to be rich. You're going to live in a big house. You're going to you drive one of the fastest and finest cars there is. Amen. Why? Because what gaineth the man, what profit the man to gain the whole world and do what? No, tell me how to anchor my soul in the Lord. Because when I anchor my soul in the Lord, then God has promised me this. He'll give me the desires of my heart. Amen. And then when I do that and, and my soul is anchored in the Lord, he made me this promise. I'll make you the head and not the tail. I'll make you a lender and not a borrower. I promise you. My God, my God. My God, my God. And you know what? Then you don't come to church actually just looking for stuff. Amen. I come not looking at his hand. I come looking at his face because I look at his face. I got everything in his hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want him to look on me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know what? I read a story about being alone with God. And many of us don't want to be alone with God. Amen. Because we don't want God to see which he already sees what's in us. Amen. Because we're not willing to deal with, you got to have to be in a place right now. I'm ready to deal with me. I'm ready to deal with me. I'm not talking about anybody. I ain't talking about my wife. I ain't talking about my daughter. I'm ready, my son. I'm ready to deal with me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because when I get to heaven, it's not going to be a group gathering. I'm going to get there by myself. Hallelujah. And when the book opens, amen, he's not going to say, well, I see where y'all know. He says, I'm going to see where you. Wow. I often talk about the enemy. Enemy. I got to deal with that rascal. Thank you, O Lord. That's a rascal, too. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and, and you know what? When, when you go into your prayer closet, you first got to deal with that rascal. You first got to deal with Simon. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. For there's a war. What did, what did Paul say? There's a war in my members. That, because when I seek to do right, wrong is always there. Oh, help me, God. Help me, God. Thank you, oh Lord. I'm closing. I really am. How important is it that God prayed for me? Look at John 11 and 42. Please put that up real quick. Listen to what Je Jesus was out uh, standing at the mouth uh, uh, of Lazarus cave. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, word had already got to him. Amen. That Lazarus had, dead, had, had died. Listen to what he says in John 11 and 42. He says, and I know that thou heareth me when? always. See, that's, that's never prayer that God, the Lord Jesus prays on you that God doesn't hear. And anytime he prays, he's going to answer. Amen. Praise God. He said, but because of the people that stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Amen. Don't you know God has sent the Lord Jesus to be our Savior? And the good news is he's prayed for us. And everything he prays for gets answered. Sometimes that's why, you know what, what you used to do and feel good in it, you don't feel good anymore, hallelujah, because somebody been praying and God heard, and then the Lord started praying on you. Here's the good news. I don't care how long you've been dead. Huh. Lazarus had been dead. Not only had Lazarus been dead, but he'd been what? Stinking dead. Whew. But when the Lord prayed, uh, 
my, 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 my. When, 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 when Jesus prayed, oh, Lazarus had to come up out of the grave. Uh, hallelujah. As a matter of fact, I hear some shaking and some rattling of the bones even right now. Uh, hey, hey, I hear some rattling of the bones even right now because God is praying for someone, hallelujah, even right now. Thank you, oh God. Thank you. Somebody's being brought in. Somebody, hallelujah, is being uh, uh, wooed in. But God has prayed for you, and things are beginning to happen. Hallelujah. Sometimes this is your first time in the church, and you're saying, what is going on? What happened to Peter? Peter began to learn what was in his own heart. And he had to deal with it because he wanted to serve others. Our salvation isn't only about us. Our salvation is to be that buffer, to be that go-between, between us and fallen humanity. Listen, we're standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. We get ready to go home. I'm so glad God pray, the Lord Jesus prayed for me. Because there's no one greater. There's no one greater than our God. Thank you, O oh Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's no one greater than our God. Hallelujah. And it was him that prayed for me. God knows us all. If God has spoken to you, are you willing to leave?
If you really love him and you understand that Jesus prayed for you, bless God in this place. And you understand that he's still praying and interceding for you right now. Bless God in this place. No, you bless him in this place and give him glory and honor. No matter what, no matter where, when, how, or why, there's one thing to hold true. Jesus prayed for us and is praying for us. And he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. God, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, thank you for your visitation today, God. Thank you for your word today, God. Thank you for the fact of knowing that you prayed for us and that you're still praying and interceding for us right now. God, bless as we go from here, but not from you. God, let you and the word seep all down into the deepest parts of us, God, that we be changed and we never be the same again. God, restore and revive and refresh and renew and change and transform and bring up and bring out, God. Turn around, God. Cause chaos to become peace. Let the low be brought high. Oh, my God, you do it, Lord. Let somebody mount up on wings as an eagle today. God, we thank you for the man of God. Bless, refresh, revive, and restore. And God, we promise to come back giving you praise, giving you thanks, and giving you glory in all the time in between. We give you honor and thanks for it all. In Jesus' name, we say thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen and amen. You are dismissed. Be friendly and greet one another. And we will be back at 4.